Welcome on board! We're heading towards Lerwick, Shetland on this beautiful ferry. The ferry is just fantastic, such a great experience on its own. There is a little shop, bars and a restaurant offering dinner and breakfast with a selection of local food, a playground for children, gaming machines and a cinema. It also features different types of cabins, bed cabins and sleep pods. Sleep pods cost less than £50, pounds, I believe, and it's so comfortable I never felt I needed a full-size bed. And here we are, Lerwick bus station. There is no bus service from the ferry terminal to the town centre. So you either need to have a car or to walk to the town centre, which will take around 20 minutes. Lerwick means Bay of Clay in Old Norse. It is located 200 kilometres off the north coast of Scotland, 340 kilometres from Aberdeen and only 357 kilometers from Bergen in Norway. No surprise it has strong historical connection with Scandinavia. It was colonized by Vikings in 9th century and officially became part of Scotland in 15th century. Around the same time as Orkney. Not sure why, perhaps due to its location, it looks like Shetland preserved Vikings culture in much more ways. For example, the world's famous fire festival, which takes place in the last week of January. The tradition began in 19th century, when young men fired guns, banged drums, exploded small bombs. Yeah, not vanilla type of celebration. Well, I guess, what would you expect from Vikings, children? These days, the festival is more organized, with a torch-lit procession. When all these courts have gathered, they throw their torches in the galley. This follows a night of drinking and celebrating. The temperature in Shetland is quite low here all around the year. 
with average temperature from 5 to 15 degrees. Have I mentioned the temperature today in the morning was 8 degrees? 8 degrees. Vikings don't get cold, I guess. Right, let's have a walk along the central part of Lerwick. As you can see, it's completely empty. It doesn't look this way all the time though. It's early Sunday morning, so everything is closed. There are lots of nice places in the town centre, including shops, restaurants and even very helpful tourist centre. I couldn't find it this time, but last time I visited, I tried world's tastiest ice cream. Shetland hairy cows are clearly magical. Now, let's visit some other places. When you leave the town centre, you can quickly notice how the traditional Scottish architecture is being replaced by Scandinavian-like buildings. When I came to Shetland for the first time, I was literally shocked to see signs of Vikings and Scandinavian culture almost everywhere. It felt like I visited a Scandinavian country to a certain extent. You can see it everywhere, Vikings bus station, lots of houses built in Scandinavian style, names of places, food, the way people look, it's unbelievable. And the landscapes have stolen my heart. There are almost no visible trees, just endless hills and fields and the sea.
as Shetland is an archipelago of isles, they somehow need to be connected. And this is why aviation is very well developed here. Flights from the Scottish mainland are quite expensive though. And this is the beginning of the runway. It begins right from the sea. Now, that's one of my favorite places, a stunning white sand beach, a historical hotel with an incredible food and a Neolithic settlement nearby, which was inhabited 6,000 years ago. It was closed this time, but it's definitely worth to visit. Some of the shells that I found had a clear sign of a pearl element's development. In this weather you definitely need a good portion of hot soup. I must admit it was the best fish soup and buttered fish I've ever had in my entire life. Now, another thing that surprised me here is that there were strong connections with Russia decades ago. I noticed this in Orkney already, but here it's even stronger. Russian style tableware, clothes and some other stuff. This is a display of a Shetlandic house, mid-18th century. There are two rooms, which could accommodate up to 10-12 people from babies to the elderly. There were no windows at all, and the only light could come from the chimney. Most of the family slept in box beds, and other children could sleep in the loft above, where farming gear was stored. Interestingly, it looks the exact same way as Russian houses in the same period in time in villages. This type of houses survived up until mid-20th century in Russia. This is a small hand-powered mill that was used in every home. To work it, the grain was poured into the hole in the top of the stone and then the stone was manually moved. It's time to go back to the mainland. See you soon, Shetland. <laughs>